So today I'm actually going to minister out of Proverbs 31, uh, which is the chapter that is often referred to as the passage about the virtuous woman. However, I, I really think that if you read this passage, you realize it's not just about some amazing superwoman somewhere. But it actually is, I think, a picture of Solomon's expression of love towards his bride, but in it there's a prophetic picture about Jesus and his bride. Because let me just say, I used to hate reading Proverbs 31 because this woman was a severe overachiever. Okay, especially the part about getting up before the sun to cook before her, to cook for her family. I told my family that's just not going to happen, okay? I did tell them at one point, I said, I will go one better than the virtuous woman. I will set out cereal bowls the night before. Here is the cereal, the milk's in the fridge. When you wake up, help yourself, okay? So I actually did it the night before, okay? So, uh, but I, you know, the, all this stuff that this, that this lady did. I, now I'm standing here preaching in front of women that have had nine children. So I think that they probably hit, hit the mark as valiant, virtuous women. Amen? And so when I, when I read this passage in just a moment, we're going to read it as though it is written to Christ's bride, which is the church. Amen? And so for, for all of you men out there who are maybe a little bit in, uncomfortable with having a message preached where God is speaking to you and calling you a bride, let me just say that us women always have to deal with the scriptures that say we're sons of God. Okay? So for one day, you can understand what it means to be the bride. And I just want to say the worship was amazing this morning. And there was such an intimacy in the, in the, the worship and an intimacy when we're singing, You're Beautiful to Me. How many understand that's a love song between the bride and her bridegroom? Amen? And so I want to read you a couple of scriptures for those of you that may not be totally on the same page as being a bride. Revelation chapter 19, verse 6, it says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife, wave your hand if you're his wife, Come on, guys. This is the only time you get to be a wife. The only time. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true sayings of God. Isaiah 54 verse 5 says, For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. That word Lord of hosts is actually Jehovah Sabaoth, which is literally the Lord of the angel armies. So our husband's name is the Lord of the angel armies. Come on, he's powerful, he's mighty, he's magnificent, he's awesome. He's beautiful, amen? Revelation 22, 17 says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Now, traditionally, when we read Proverbs 31, we read about the virtuous woman. But when you actually look in Scripture, you actually find that the word virtuous there um, conjures up maybe even a different picture than what the root of that word is. Because the word, the word that is used when it speaks about the virtuous woman, who can find a virtuous woman, is actually the word kayil. Say that with me, kayil. Kayil is actually one of the names of God, and it is a, a word that means far more than just virtuous. Virtuous maybe brings to mind holy, pure, right? What else? Innocent, okay, virtuous. But I want you to listen to what this word kail actually means. And all the ladies out there can be challenged by this. 
But also, I think the church is beginning to understand this passage is actually written about us. The church, the bride of Christ, the Kael people of God. It actually, this word Kael means valiant, a force of men, means, and resources, an army. Did you hear that word from Elisha this morning? God is raising up an army that will destroy death. Come on, out of the mouth of babes. He's, this word, word kayo means an army, wealth, virtue, valor, strength, might, power, riches, ability. Come on, lift your hands up and just pull down that Kyle strength of God that God wants to release to us today. God is raising up a valiant church. Yes, we should be virtuous, but we need to understand we're valiant. We're victorious. We are full of strength and might and power and riches and wealth and that we are a force to be reckoned with in the earth. Amen. Now, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19, shows us this word kayil, um, meaning Jehovah kayil, meaning the Lord, our strength. And it says, the Lord God is my strength. Matter of fact, I want you, if you don't mind, just stand up when I read this. Because I feel, I really felt this morning that the Lord wanted to impart strength for all of us for the days that are ahead. I believe God is doing things. I, I posted in Facebook this, this last uh, week, um, and I said, I, I heard the Lord say, this month is going to be amazing. It's the month of May, in case you didn't get it, okay? Amazing. I believe that God is getting ready to begin to cause his blessings to overtake us in a new way. And when I say that, don't just think money. Think family miracles, think influence, think revival, think new souls coming into the kingdom. Think the harvest that God wants to bring to us in every area of abundance. But let me just say this, is that when God brings breakthrough, it usually means more work. How many still want breakthrough? Some of you are like, well, I'm already tired now. Exactly. That's why I've got you standing. Okay. How many of you feel like you could use a little bit more strength? Some of you are like, oh, I'm too tired to raise my hand. Yes, that's you. You're the ones that I'm talking to, okay? So let's just lift up our hand as I read this to you. It says, the Lord God is my strength, Jehovah Kail, my personal bravery and my invincible army. He makes my feet like hind's feet and will make me to walk, not stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, suffering, or even responsibility. So, Father, right now, God, I break every yoke of weariness, every yoke, Father God, of heaviness, and I thank you, God, we're coming into some of our greatest days of rejoicing, our greatest days of breakthrough, and God, we're going to have every bit of strength that we need to lay hold on every aspect of our breakthrough, every aspect of increase and multiplication that you promised to us in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen? Amen. 